we're going to take. We're going to be, that's going to be Jay Rai. What would you like to say? Please give me something, something amazing out of the Hindu mythology. Oh, God. I mean, uh, oh, well, it's funny. I, I brought, I was, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Oh, good. Well, there was an atheist questioning agnostic in me all through my, 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 my life. But all my friends were Muslims and they never really, really made me, you know, I felt stupid saying that I, there might not be a God. They were all like you, what you would call fanatics. I never had the answers to give them that there might not be a God. Uh, but now I read up on it and, you know, now I can talk to them what's, you know, to question God and religion. Mm. And, oh, another thing, quick thing, reason I'm probably uh, some of us... B b before we go further, I just want to ask you, so how is that treating you? Because now, once you become well-versed on these um, on, on these arguments, they're actually quite simple. You know, the first yeah. cause argument, and all, you know, who created God, and how, where, where do we all come from, and then we're looking at the evolution and the origins of the universe. So once you become well-versed in that, then you go, okay, I can tackle that. Uh, and, and, and I think this was a story of every atheist that I know of. I mean, I had these questions, but I wasn't articulated uh, with these arguments or, or articulated enough that I could win an argument or at least look confident when I'm speaking about this issue. So now that you think that you understand them, how is that, how is that treating you now whenever you get engaged with, 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 with those God believers, whether they are Christians or Muslims? Well, they, they wouldn't talk to me now, actually. They wouldn't dare debate me or yeah, even because... talk. Because they're they, they, because they're worried that they might lose their faith. Yes, well, especially. All the time. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, just a quick, you know, I'm not a Muslim hater, but some of us, how we became Islamophobes. I was brought up with Muslim friends all my life, and a lot of them are, are very extremists. I was brought up and bullied all my growing up in school because of my faith, and there were there were taunts and insults. And that's how some of us became, you know, sometimes we felt like joining uh, Tommy Robinson's. Obviously, I wouldn't because I know there's some good, mostly there are good people, but the extremists spoil it for the rest of the Muslims as well. Yeah, look, I mean, okay, so judging by your accent, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you would have grown up, uh, I don't know, some part of Britain, let's just say. Um, so... Uh, and you would have grown up in the 90s, I'm assuming. Just I'm, I'm guessing all of that. Um, so that would have been a very different era or di very different time. There would have been a lot of tension between this, you know, the packy tension and this white tension and the, 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 all, all of that, which, I'm, which I've been told is very different now. Um, and, and the way I see it, you know, like, I mean, uh, I, w I went to this countryside England, you know, and... Like here, here I am, brown man w walking around with a camera in his hand. is just running around, just looking at things. I don't get any stares from anyone. So th this is countryside England, okay? So in Australia, like Australia is a very, I would say that Australia is not a racist country, despite of what is usually paddled uh, about Australia. Australia is not a racist country. But when you do go to country Australia, when you do go to a distant, distant, like away from big cities, um, kids, not really not even grown-ups, but kids usually stare at you like, what is that thing? <laughs> why does, mummy, why does he look like that? Because <laughs> you know, that kind of, they haven't seen a non-white person, uh, especially kids. So, you know, um, so England to me now, I think looks like a very, very non-racist country. Of course, there will be some racist somewhere um, and, and they would make those taunts. So in 90, when you were growing up and you would have seen some people taunting you uh, for who you are or some Muslims taunting you for whatever your background is. And then you would have been like, as you said, that you were enticed to just join the other mob that were taunting Muslims. Um, and this could have easily gone either way. And people, and, and this is how bigotry hope is. I, I only understood that, how bad this thing was in England when I read Majid Nawaz, where he was talking about that, that that did more harm than good. Because Majid said it was easier for him to find himself in the company of other brown men who are also living in this self, uh, the, 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 the self condemnation in the sense that well we are stuck in these Western countries and these whites don't want to adopt us, and we're gonna be, um, you know, we're gonna create our own little group, 
uh, because they're being because these white racists are just attacking them all the time. Uh, but I'm assuming things have changed now. I'm, 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 I've, I've seen like this is so beautiful. Like when I see you know like um, I, I, the other day I was in Bath. I didn't see many uh, ethnic people over there, but I saw this this hijabi girl. Uh, young 16, 17, 18, I don't know how they were old, and she was going with this white English girl, and they were just going to have a cup, uh, and they just sat down right in front of me at the, at the restaurant that I was, and they just sat down and had a coffee or something. I was like, okay, that's cute. You know, this is beautiful. This is how things should be. We should be just all accepting of each other. We should all be loving of each other. I know things get complicated about about our complex views when we go in detail, Um but uh, but but I guess that's just the way it is. But I'm glad that you didn't go that way, and you actually understand that you know it would have it would have done no one any good. You would have been bitter. You would have been bitter from the other side as well. It just it would have it, it, it would have grown this hatred, and not and, and you know this kind of hatred that some white supremacists have. Yes, Muslims are the most uh, prominent group. It's the easiest one to to you know to highlight when it comes to their own problems um but the the white supremacists are not this, this is why i was surprised i shared this news story last week about this canadian hindus uh this canadian hindu nationalist who was jumping in the lap of these white supremacists because they were hating on the muslim family that was that was run over by a truck by driven by a white supremacist and i was like you freaking idiot you are supporting this Anti-Muslim bigot, white supremacist, think because you hate Muslims, but you think that this white supremacist is not going to turn on you at some point because these guys don't like Asians, they don't like brown people, they don't like black people, they don't like Muslims, they don't like anyone. So that kind of behavior never promotes that; it, it doesn't do anyone any good. So I'm glad you didn't. Anyway, so I, I, I didn't get the rest of your point, but sorry, I rambled on a bit. Well, thank you. Nice speaking to you. I was, I'm actually a Hindu. I was, you know, I was never questioned my faith when I was growing up. We were all born up to believe in God. But as you grow up, you start to question things. And yes, I wish, you know, more Hindus would do the same. Mm. And just a quick thing. Have you, I I learned a lot from Ali Sina debates. He does written debates. And I was very, very fascinated here. I yeah, I, I read, I, yeah. Look, uh, Ali Sina. Uh, yeah, he's not really that active anymore. I think I, I read one of his books. I forgot what is sweet. Uh, what was it? Um, Understanding what, what Muhammad. It? Understanding Muhammad. Yeah, I, I read that book. So that's a very thorough book. Very good book about uh, the character of Muhammad. And um, but he's. I, I think he's shown his face once in, when, when this ex-Muslim movement really blew up. And I think he sat with Ali Rizwi. And, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of my generation of ex-Muslims um, are aware of him. But I think but he's just not on the scene as such. So I think it's just been – it's just been. I, I don't know. I think this is just how it is, and I've been talking about it too. Like in 10 years' time, you'd be seeing totally different ex-Muslims, uh, different ex-Muslim YouTubers or whatever the, whatever the norm would be in, in the future, uh, you, different ex-Muslim authors and everything in 10, 15 years' time. They'll be totally different. Harris Sultan would be some of you people who would have seen me. You're like, oh, do you remember that? The guy 15 years ago. I learned a lot from him. I used to talk about it. So it, it just keeps changing. But uh, yeah, I, 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 other than that, I haven't really followed him much. Guys, nice talk. No, no, no. no. So Thanks. embarrassed for I, this Canadian Hindu guy. He's so embarrassing for the rest of us. Don't worry about it. it, it, it all we need is just need we need people... To call them out and it's always good when people from the same background call them out that's why it's always easier for us ex-muslims to criticize islam but it's not that easy for me to criticize or comment on hindu nationalists or whatever i still get away with it i guess because i am south asian but uh, a gura would would be so nervous about it uh, or, or even even pakistanis would just get this straight away the label oh well you're a paki that's why you're shitting on Indian nationalism or Hindu nationalism. So I think it's always good that we need other Indian atheists, Hindu ex-Hindu atheists. We need them to take the charge because some people have actually said that, you know, like this atheist or liberal movement in Pakistan is probably going faster than, uh, is going ahead faster than, than India because Indians are still caught up in the, oh, our Hinduism was great, glorious past and all that ways. The, these and the, 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 where these rebellious anti-Islamic movements are rising 
a lot faster in a country like Pakistan, for instance. So where is that going to take us 20 years time? Or well, forget it, 20, maybe 10 years time. So I don't know. Pakistan might become a very liberal country in 10, 15 years. But India might not because, you know, we're not getting we're not getting ex-Hindu atheists coming forward and talking about these crappy, crappy topics that I am forced to talk about. Like, oh, the cow urine cures all these diseases and cow dung is uh, just as good as mudding or whatever. They, you know, like that kind of crap. So anyway, thank you for coming. I just would like, I would just hope that you guys will talk about it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you All much. right. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.